Welcome to another video in which we will solve a past paper question together involving differentiation. So make sure to check my website explainingmaths.com. You're going to find all my other free resources over there. And uh, it's important to note that all the credit goes to Cambridge examinations because this is their question. Let's see what's going on. It says the diagram shows a glass window consisting of a rectangle of height h meters and width 2r meters and a semicircle radius r. So a glass window, well, yeah, that looks like a glass window in a church or something. The height, yeah, a rectangle with height h and width 2r and a semicircle it says and the radius is r. Yeah, it all makes sense. The perimeter, they continue, of the window is 8 meters and that of course is important. The first question, I for two points, express h in terms of r. So what we need to do, we have to create an equation where it's going to say h equals and then in terms of r. Okay? So h is the subject. Now they tell us something about the perimeter and the perimeter is the sum of the lengths on the outside. There we go. So if we add those lengths together, that equals how much? That should equal 8. Yeah? So the perimeter is 8. And that equals h plus 2r plus h again. Yeah, so that is the rectangle, h plus 2r plus h again. And then half the circumference of the circle, yeah, because it's a semicircle. So half times 2 pi r. There we go. And if we simplify that, it's going to e be uh, 2h plus 2r plus pi r. There we go. And um, we have to, let me see again, express h in terms of r. So let's keep h on the right side and we're going to say 8 minus 2r minus pi r. Then we're going to divide everything by 2 and then we really have isolated h. So h equals 4 minus r minus pi r over 2. Fantastic. So that is H in terms of R. Now um, I'm going to put a box around it. I do not have a lot of space on this screen, yeah? so I'm really trying to squeeze in all the workings and all the answers in the amount of space I have. So I do apologize if it's a little bit messy, but it's just not a lot of space on my tablet. Let's continue. Show that the area of the window, a meter squared, is given by this particular formula. Now a show that question that's important to, to realize is um, I cannot use this information in my workings. No, you have to see this as the answer key. Yeah? This is the answer and I have to show that that answer is correct, but I cannot use this in my workings. Okay, now let's find out. They say that the area of the window, so the area of the window gives that particular formula. Now what? is the area, it's the area of a rectangle plus the area of the semicircle. So if I do that in blue over here, I, I, so the area of the rectangle uh, would be 2r times h, yeah, length times width, 2r times h, plus, and then the area of the semicircle would be pi r squared over 2, yeah, divided by 2 because it's a semicircle. Now that is not what they are saying because what is the difference? Here the variable is only r, and over here I have r, but also the variable h. So somehow I have to get rid of the h, and how do I do that? Well, we've done question i already. We have said that h is the same as 4 minus r minus pi r over 2. So I'm going to substitute that information in this particular equation, and then I will get rid of h. Okay, so what will that look like? So 2r times h is going to be 2r times 4 minus r minus pi r over 2, close in bracket, plus pi r squared over 2. Yeah, so that's just to finish the equation, pi r squared over 2. Now I'm going to expand this, and while I'm working, my final answer should be like that. Okay. Um, so hopefully that will be the case. So I'm going to get 8r minus 2r squared uh, and then 2r times minus pi r over 2. This is a 2 cancel, so that's going to be minus pi r squared. Is that correct? I believe so. Plus pi r squared 
over 2. There we go. Is it the same already? Well, I have the 8r, that one is the same. Minus 2r squared, that one is the same. But then they say minus a half pi r squared. And I have minus pi plus a half. Um, I should say minus pi r squared plus a half pi r squared. So indeed, I have to simplify that. So a equals 8r minus 2r squared minus a half pi r squared. Okay, and then you can say QED. If you want, you don't have to. And you can look up, you can Google what that exactly means. QE, and that's a D. Okay, there we go. So show that, yeah, this is my answer, and that's the answer key, and indeed it's the same. We continue, given that r can vary, yeah, so the length can uh, vary, find the value of r for which a has a stationary value, yeah, for which the area has a stationary value. Now what does stationary value mean? It means that if you would graph it, uh, you have a particular local maximum or a local minimum. It means stationary value that the derivative, that the gradient is zero. So you can already for one point say, well, and I will do that in red again, so that the derivative has to equal zero. That's already one point uh, in the pockets. So let's find the derivative. Let's find the derivative. So the derivative of the area 8r becomes 8, minus 2r squared becomes minus 4r, and minus a half pi r squared becomes minus pi r. Please realize pi is a number, eh? it's 3.14 and a lot of other decimals, okay, but it's a number. Okay, so that will be the derivative. Find the value of r for which a has a stationary value. So now I'm going to equal that to 0, and I'm going to find the value of r. So um, minus 4r minus pi r equals minus 8. So if I factorize that, minus 4 minus pi equals minus 8. So r equals minus 8 over minus 4 minus pi. There we go. And I'm going to plug it in my calculator now. Um, so I'll do 8 divided by bracket for plus pi, if just turn it all around, equals, and uh, you're gonna get 1.12, correct to three significant figures, 1.12. Find the value of r, well, r is 1.12, then the uh, area has a stationary value, which means that the derivative, uh, the gradient is zero. The last question, determine, yeah, so find out whether this stationary value, so we're talking about this stationary value, is a maximum or a minimum. Yeah? So if we would graph this function, would at that value of r, would there be a mountain, a maximum, or a valley, which is a minimum? And there's several ways of doing that, and I always look at the second derivative. So I'm going to find the second derivative, a double prime. Uh, which is the derivative of the derivative. So the derivative of this one is going to be minus 4 minus pi. And I don't have a variable anymore, r is gone, but what do I normally do? I'm going to evaluate the second derivative for that, for that value of r, 1.12. And that is, in this case, going to stay minus 4 minus pi. And then I only check, I'm only interested whether it is positive or negative. And indeed, that is going to be negative, so it's going to be smaller than zero for all values of r, actually. And that means whenever the double derivative, or I should say the second derivative is negative, then we're always talking about a maximum. So if the second derivative for that particular value is negative, we're always talking about a maximum. And if you do the same and you evaluate it and you get a positive answer, so bigger than zero, it will always be a minimum. I hope that was useful, guys. Check my website, explainingmaths.com. I have loads of resources. Everything is for free. Many more past um, exam questions and other things. So uh, like and share if it was useful. And I wish you a very pleasant day. Bye-bye.